Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you so much for joining me today. So I received an email from a lady and she asked me, when I see spirit guides, what is it that I actually feel, sense or see? So I want to clarify today because I am a freak. And even in my email, I replied to this lady, I am a freak because I actually believe to be one of a very, very select few on the planet. And please know when I say select few, I mean that we're chosen. We sign up for this stuff, okay, in our life contracts, etc. So I am one of a very selected few who actually sees, hears, and touches spirit guides. So... I'll tell you a little story because I haven't always been able to see them. It was only a few years ago that I was at the beach, um, at the pool with my daughter and I was in the pool and behind me, because it's a 50 metre Olympic size swimming pool and it had the buoys, you know, the buoys or whatever you want to call it. So they had the little floaties down the lanes. So what I was doing, and I'm up to this much in water. The water's this deep, right? So it's five, six, four foot six. I think the water is deep, right? So what I'm doing is I'm going down the lane, bopping as I'm walking and I'm doing my exercises. And I hear, just like someone sitting on the side is yelling out, I heard, Linda! So I've turned around and I'm looking at all the people sitting on the side of the pool. No one's looking at me. So I turn around this way and there's some people over there and there's nobody there that's looking at me that I'd recognize. So I heard, Linda! And this time I realized that the voice was coming from behind me. So when I've turned around, this is a picture that I drew just after the pool. So I turned around in the pool, so you can see the lane markings, right? And the, the boy things. Here she was. There was no water around her in the pool. Like, I'm this deep in water, and there was no water there. It was all energy coming out of her. She looked like a real person. Just like me sitting here in front of you. But I had all this energy coming out of her. Or well, me, because if, you know, if it was me sitting there. She had on a brown dress. I could see a dress because it went all the way down to her knees. But there was no water there. So she points to me, and this is what I've drawn. This is her hand she's pointing at me because I'm not a very good drawer. Right? But she's pointing at me, and she says, Are you ready? And I'm looking around thinking, Hello, there's all these people at the pool. Are you seeing this? No one was even paying attention. It was like they all had a veil over them where they just were, un they were oblivious to what I was doing. No one was paying attention to me at this point. So it was like they were under some sort of hypnotic trance where they weren't watching what I was going through. Because, you know, I'm talking to this wo woman and nobody is even paying attention to me. So I look at her she's, and I said, who are you? And she says, it doesn't matter, but we think you're ready. And I said, ready for what? And then she disappeared and the water went back to normal. You know, water, how at the pool, it's like this. <laughs> it went back to normal. And I'm looking around thinking, hello, there's like a hundred people in this pool. Did anyone see that? Why was it just me? And why didn't they see me interacting with her? No one saw a thing. So it was about two weeks later. I have to remember, she said, we think you're ready. Now, who the hell is we? Because she said, we think you're ready. So that's open to discussion, right? Because if you've got thoughts, please comment below. <clears throat> but she said, we think you're ready. And then it was about two weeks later that a man came to my house for a reading. And as he walked in, he had this huge white rat on his shoulder. And, and it was like it was a real rat. I just looked at it and I went, wow, he's got it. He's brought his pet rat over. And I said, wow, cool rat. And he's like, what, 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 what? I 
said, mate, 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 well, what, what do you mean? You can't see it. And he said, no. I said, it's right there on your shoulder. You've got this white rat, a little tiny you know, white rat, little, little, you know, in size comparison. And then this rat, it opened its mouth, and as clear as day, I heard it say, because its mouth was moving, it said, I may be a, ma I, I may be a small rat, but I am this man's protector. Okay. I thought, so this guy can't see the rat, but I can. I'm seeing it like, <clears throat> I'm seeing it like it's right there on his sleeve. So since that day, the ocean has parted. <laughs> and now I see spirit guides all the time. They tell me their stories. They tell me why they're with this person. They tell me lessons this person has to learn. Okay? Some of them just go, and they don't shut up. Others are very short and succinct, right? They're very short. I'm this man's protector. Okay. Okay. So I like drawing people spirit guides, which I put in my book, Spirit Guides and Life Pass Explain. Email me if you wish a free copy. My email is below in the description. All you've got to say is spirit guide book, please. Okay. But when I do talk, you know, I like drawing the person of um, their spirit guides. And when, if I'm doing like a Zoom or an email reading where someone says, hey, can you please tell me what a spirit guide is? I'll go onto Google and I try and find a very similar photo. So then it saves me drawing their picture and then attaching it to an email, sending it to my files and all the rest of it. So it's easy to just find something on Google that's similar to what I see. Okay. So some of the spirit guides over the years, over the last couple of years, this guy turned up, it was a lion. And I swear to God, when he roared, he was, I could have heard him too. My hair went, woo with the roar of this lion. My God, how powerful was that? I had this hippie girl come through. So here's one of my drawings. A hippie girl. She's like 22, 24 years old from the 1964 era. And she was telling me, you know, she's, she's flicking her hair like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, this, she, every second word was yeah. You know how like, like now we use the word like? Back in 64, it was all, yeah. Hey, yeah, man, let's go to the shop. Yeah, let's go to the shop. Yeah, man, we'll go to the shop. She's flicking her hair. And she's talking to me like this. And it's like she's standing right in front of me. I had this one guy on Zoom. And he said, can you please tell me what my spirit guide is? And I said, yeah, sure. Do you give me permission? Sure. And so I just say this little chant. And all I say is, I wish to connect with this man's spirit guide. If... It wishes to come through. Please know I am so respectful and I will pass on any messages that you wish to tell me to tell to your human. So as soon as I do this, this one day, my whole office here turns to water. I'm in the ocean. <laughs> How does this work? I'm in the ocean. I'm up. Uh, there's water around me and this huge four foot tuna fish comes swimming up to me right up to my face and it opens its mouth and it starts talking and I'm sitting here um because he's on zoom and I'm okay uh how do I not freak out right now so when I saw the pterodactyl, because I've had a pterodactyl in my yard, <laughs> the pterodactyl came into my yard. Oh my God, you, know, you can't make this stuff up. So where's my photo? I'm just trying to look for my photo of the pterodactyl. All right. Oh my God, where's my pterodactyl? Oh, so I just take off the name because sometimes I put their names on the bottom. So if I just do that, you can see that there's writing in there. So I put the names on the bottom of who these are. So this is a Pakistani guy that came through. He's a dancer. He was sitting there doing this A -a 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 dance <laughs> as he's talking to me. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, right? Um, so when I had the pterodactyl in my backyard, <laughs> see, I've got this seat <laughs> and the man was sitting there in my backyard 
And he says, oh, can you please tell me what my pterodactyl, what my, what my spirit guide is? And I said, sure. I wasn't expecting a bloody 80-foot pterodactyl to turn up. You know, one of its wings <laughs> was over one side of my fence. And I've got this yard that, you know, it's, it's about 100 foot long, my fence, right, my yard. So one, one wing went up over the fence and the other wing went up over the other fence. <laughs> so it filled up my whole backyard when it extended out its wings. So over 80 foot long was this wingspan of this animal, bird, pterodactyl, dinosaur, whatever you want to call it. Oh, my God. So... <laughs> I'll tell you the story what happened with this guy sitting in my yard, right? Because here he is. I've just put him into his black because, you know, like you want to pay attention to the bird, right? So <laughs> he's sitting there nice and calmly and he says, oh, yeah, can you please tell me what my spirit guide is? <laughs> Instantly, I hear this whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's coming. It's coming. Whatever this whooshing noise is, yeah. And it comes down and it lands and then it folds up its wings da, 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 and it sits down in my backyard. And I'm looking past him, you know, because he's sitting on the chair, right? He's sitting on the chair and this thing's behind him and I'm sitting there. Holy shit! <laughs> I swear to God, this, this the, the, the beak, well, we get there. Okay, I'll tell you what the beak is. But its beak was about four, six foot long. <laughs> it could have eaten me in one nuzzle, guzzle, <laughs> one bite. Linda was a one bite wonder that day. Oh, and I'm looking at the size of, the, and the eyes, you know, the eyes are like this big on it. And they're looking at me like a bird does. <laughs> God, I was so scared. Why though? Because they're spirit guys, yeah, they don't harm us. Oh my god. So I'm sitting there with this guy <laughs> and I said, mate, you got you you got you got a dinosaur <laughs> And he says, What? And he's like looking around, looking around, looking up, looking down, <laughs> where's this dinosaur? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 keep it calm, Linda, keep it calm, be respectful, be respectful, you know, how often do we ever see a real pterodactyl in your backyard? Because I saw it just like it was there. So I said to this guy, I said, mate, do you mind if I go out and touch your dinosaur, right? He says, yeah, yeah, go for it, do, 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 you know, thinking I'm cuckoo. So I go out in the backyard and it's got its wings up. And I thought, I've got to go in under its wing, right? <laughs> I'm going to go in under the wing. So I'm crouching down on the ground, going in under this wing. I could see it as clear as day, right? <laughs> and he's there like, doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> what's going on? So I'm crawling around in my backyard and I'm feeling this wing above me. And it was like under the bat wing, if you know what a bat looks like. And it had a, a re, instead of an elbow that does this, it bended back the other way. It had like a double jointed elbow where it brings up its wings, right? So it had a double elbow type thing, a reverse elbow. It bent the wrong way. And so I'm touching it. And I could see the veins and it was like leather. It was leather. It was so hard. This leather skin that this bird had under its wings, right? Oh my God. Not, not, not feathers. So it wasn't like an ostrich. Okay. It wasn't a flying ostrich. It was a pterodactyl. It had leather for its skin. So I'm underneath it, <laughs> feeling it. And it gave me permission to do this, right? And I'm there thinking, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. How often do you get to touch a real pterodactyl, right? Thank you so much, universe, for giving me this gift. So I come back to him and it puts its beak, what I call its beak, over the chair. 
And I'm looking at this man, you know, and I could hardly see him because the beak was coming so far in front of it like this. And I said, mate, I, I, um, um, it's got this really long beak. And then the beak opens up, you know, like a dinosaur. <laughs> I'm not like a, like a crocodile. It was like a crocodile. And it opens up its mouth and I could see straight down it, right down it, like three-dimensional, straight down its throat. And I'm, I'm sitting in my chair like, oh, 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 oh yeah. Because <laughs> I could see its tongue and I could see right down into the back of its throat. And, oh, my God. So it opens its mouth and it says, I do not have a beak. It's called a spout. Okay. Thank you so much. And I said, thank you so much. After it dawned on me, you know, this dinosaur speaking English to me. Thank you so much. So then it gave me a message for the man. And the man said, well, I'm going to leave now. And the dinosaur was just sitting in my backyard waiting patiently for him because it was with him, right? As all spirit guides are, they're always with us. So wherever we decide to go, they just follow us like a little lost puppy. And that's true. Okay, they just follow us everywhere. They are with us constantly. So the man left my house. He walked out of my front door and he went to the left because about three houses down, there's a walkway out onto the main road, right? So he leaves the house. I went out the back to start cleaning up like our coffee mugs and my pens and paper and also the drawing that I did, right? So I'm out the back and I can see through the gap where he's out on the, because I'm in my backyard and I can see down the gap between the houses to where he is. And this pterodactyl's in my backyard. Instantly it turns into this big blue orb. Boom! So it's like 60, 80, 100 foot long pterodactyl boom into this ball of dark blue and then it shoots across the sky like a star and it leaves this blue trail like a comet and it goes up onto one of the electricity poles you know how you have your like street lights it's up on top of that pole and it's sitting there and its tail's hanging down with its legs right because it's like this huge dinosaur and I yelled out, hey, mate, hey, mate. I called him by his name. Mate, 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 you're pterodactyl. I've got to tell you what just happened with it. So he comes running back and he said, what happened? I said, mate, I've never seen this before. It just shot into this blue orb and it shot across my backyard and it's there waiting for you as you're walking down the street. He said, where is it now? And he's looking all around. Where is it now? And I said, it's on top of the light pole. It's right there. I said, as you walk, it's just going to follow you like a little lost puppy. So not only do I see animals, fish, <laughs> oh, my God, I've seen a monk. Now he, oh, my God. Now when he came through, all I heard was the music. And it was like this, oh, 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 oh. so he didn't say much at all, the monk. Okay. I've had a, an American Indian come through. So he tells me that he's from the um, Choctaw tribe. So I had to go research that one. Okay, 1700s, right, an Indian. Um, I had an Irish lass turn up, to be sure, to be sure. Right, she spoke in Irish. Hello, hello, I'm from Ireland. I'm from, and she told me the city where she is right at the top of Ireland. Um, so um, I'm just looking through here so for some. I had a Mexican bull. Now, you know the Mexican bull fights where they get in the ring and the guy wearing the red and he's got um, the sombre thing or whatever you call it and he's got the swords and they throw swords into the bull. He was one of those. So there's a big message there, right? Even though in your strength and powerful, people are still going to take advantage of you. And it turned out that this guy was like a CEO of a company and all his co-workers and his subordinates all treated him like crud, crud. So um, that was a big learning curve for him in how to be better with his stuff. So um, I haven't got a drawing of it, but I've had a, I've had a leprechaun turn up. A leprechaun turned up in my house. He was only four foot two. 
little a short little munchkin, right? Because I'm sitting on my chair right now, so he was only short. And he, he had the, the big long beard that goes into a point. <laughs> and he comes out and he says, hello, I'm a leprechaun. To be sure, I'm this good luck, I'm, I'm this lady's good luck charm, but she keeps losing her money. I said, mate, do you lose a lot of money? She says, yeah, I've got a problem. I'm, I'm addicted to gambling. He says, yeah, well, this is, this is your leprechaun. I'm telling you to stop, stop, and get, you know, get, getting all your money together. Because you've got to, you know, you store it in the golden bucket at the end of the rainbow type thing. I try not to laugh when I see a leprechaun in a hat in my house, right? So I see them exactly as they are. Just like me sitting here right now. They talk. They tell me messages. I'm so humbled. What else can I say? But um, I've got a book. It's called Spirit Guides and Life Paths Explained. I give it away for free. If you want a copy, all you got to do is email me. Or otherwise, it is on lulu.com. So there's my book. What are spirit guides? Why do they come to us? Who can be a spirit guide? Obviously, loved ones can be spirit guides. What do they do for us? How do we know when they're around us? Do we always have them with us? Yes, that's obvious. Okay. So um, I hope that this has given some information today about what I actually see. I don't just sense them. I just don't have a feeling, oh, I sense this thing around you. I physically see them. I touch them. I interact with them as I talk. And like the pterodactyl, I look right down his spout and I can see his tonsils. Or I'm in the water swimming with tuna when they turn up. So I always say to somebody, Google, what does it mean? You know, like this tuna. What does a tuna mean spiritually? Something like that. So then you can find your own messages as well, because ultimately it's your spirit guide. I'm just the freak who gets to see them. <laughs> so I hope that's helped today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.